There he is. There's one. Let's slow down the retrieve a little bit. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This video is sponsored by Crappie Monster. Use promo code DAVIS, that is all capital letters, D-A-V-I-S, to get 20% off your entire order at crappiemonster.com. Black and chartreuse curly tail, a classic go-to bait pattern and a classic go-to color pattern. For these late pre-spawn, they're just getting into their spawning pattern crappie. Uh, if you noticed on the live scope here, these fish are just suspended over the deepest part of the weed edge. Now, typically this time of year in early to mid-May, uh, weed growth is, depending on water clarity, on our northern lakes, it's like somewhere between six to eight, maybe nine feet of water. Um, and again, it depends on lake clarity. If you're in a super stained lake, they, they're gonna only grow to about four to six feet of water until later in the summer. But the lake I'm on today is pretty clear. So these weeds grow really quickly. And all you're doing with this curly tail is just casting out over the top of the weed edges. You're just fan casting. There he is. There's another one. Ooh. Easy, buddy. The biggest thing with these, the biggest thing right now is to understand that these fish are staging up uh, on right on the edge of the spawning flat. So fan casting and search baits can be a great way to catch a ton of these fish. You're gonna go back, bud. That's why I started off with this curly tail. Now once they start locking down, you can actually go to more of a, a slip bobber approach or a fixed bobber approach, depending on how deep you are. But man, you just can't help beat a curly tail, black and chartreuse up north. Great color combination. These fish are staging up for the spawn. Um, that's why they're schooled up so tight on along this weed edge. Another thing to note on the side imaging, I get questions a lot of like how to find these fish in shallower water with side imaging. Here's a little screenshot of, or here's a little recording of side imaging. If you notice at the beginning, the side imaging is kind of a blurry uh, kind of picture. That's because the boat isn't moving. People ask if you can use side imaging when you're not moving. You can, but just understand what side imaging is doing. It's pinging off the same object over and over again, so you're gonna get that elongated line or that blurry picture. The minute you start moving that boat uh, two, three, four miles an hour, you're gonna get a much cleaner picture as you can see here. And if you notice, I'm going right across the weed bed and the fish that are suspended the highest up in the water column, that, this is what they look like, these bright specks you can pick them out right above the weed. I tried a couple bobber techniques today. It's just, it seems like they really want that bait flying across the weed bed. They're super aggressive, it seems like. Let's get back in there. There he is, got him that time. That's a little bit better fish, I think. And better fish on this lake is gonna be about an 11 inch fish. That's a good fish. Let's put him on the bump board. He's probably a 10 and a quarter maybe. He could be touching 11, maybe. All right. Oh, a 10 and a halfer right there. 10, well, he's just shy of 10 and a half. There's 10 and a half. That's a nice crappie for this lake. There's a ton of those nine, nine and a halfers in this lake, but I'm gonna throw him in the live well for now. You gotta understand we're way up north too, so our growing season is only about seven to eight months. We got a lot of things working against us to grow big, big panfish. It happens, you can catch some big panfish up here, but it's not like the mid-south or anything. Now there's fish on the live scope that are buried in the weeds. You can see them with the live scope, but you can't see them on side imaging. Um, and that's because side imaging isn't great at seeing through the weeds. Uh, but it, when these fish are suspended above that weed bed, you can definitely see them, you can definitely pick them out. I'm targeting areas that are these big spawning flats. Typically on our northern lakes, the northern bays of lakes, um, it doesn't really need to be on the north side of the lake, but any of these bays or these flats that come down to like two, three, four feet, and they stay that way for a long distance, those are going to be your spawning flats. And so trying to find those crappie right on the edge of the break where it goes from that four or five foot to maybe that 10 foot. If you can find weeds on that break, those crappie this time of year are gonna be suspended above it. There he is. There's one. 
but it slowed down the retrieve a little bit. They're not monsters. But this is one retrieve for these. I mean, we're getting into the spawning season up here, up north. It's the uh, first week of May. That is most likely a female, because I caught a couple other fish today. Typically, you can see the whiter bellies will mostly be females, but we're still early on in the, the spawning phase. Once we get into like mid to late May, you're definitely gonna see the difference. Those males are gonna have that full tuxedo look. And uh, the females, they'll be a little bit darker, but that white belly will be very distinctive. There's one, there he is. Yeah. Oh wow, that's a little bit better one. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. So this is a male. All our crappie are really dark up north, just in general, but if you notice the, the belly here, hopefully get that out of the sun so there's no glare. If you notice the belly here, it's got a little bit of black in that belly. That is a male. He's gonna get a lot darker here throughout the month of May as they start locking in on their beds, but that's a pretty cool fish. Our fish up north get really colorful, especially on these clear water lakes that we have. If you don't have live scope and you're just trying to catch as many crop as you can, fan casting with this type of pattern, just a simple curly tail pattern and a small jig is your best bet. Um, any type of search bait will probably work as well, but you really can't beat a curly tail plastic this time of year trying to catch these late pre-spawn staging crappie along these weed beds. They're gonna school up really, really tight, and for the most part, they're gonna be pretty darn aggressive. Um, you might have to switch up your retrieve a little bit. It might not be a straight retrieve. You might let it fall a little bit, and when you start reeling, your rod tip's just gonna load up. But once you do find these schools alongside of this cover, this weed edge, um, if you cast that jig anywhere close, typically this time of year, you're gonna get a bite. Um, you're not gonna have to work for it too hard. So that's gonna wrap it up. Be sure to check out crappiemonster.com. Use promo code Davis for 20% off. Check out the curly tail. Um, this jig is a 1 16th ounce ACC crappie sticks jig. I was using the six and a half foot casting rod today with a 1,000 size Viper X reel by PC Fun. Six pound mono. Typically this time of year, if you're casting in super shallow water, uh, you don't really want to use a braid or anything like that. One, especially on this lake, the lake I'm on today is pretty clear water, eight to 10 foot visibility. Uh, that's the first reason. Second reason, usually in shallow water, they can, they can see things a lot better than if you're fishing in 15, 20 foot, um, just because light penetration is a lot better in shallow water. So go with a mono. Uh, high vis is, is okay. If it's a super clear lake, let's say 15, 20 foot visibility, I might go down to a clear monofilament just to help put a few more fish in the live well and a few more fish in the frying pan. So there's a setup. If you've got any comments or questions about what I was doing in this video, please post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Good luck this spring. Have fun catching fish. We'll see you.